Hi, this is Megan Chapman, and this is the Tuesday Studio Video Visit. Thank you so much for joining me. I am not in the studio today, as you can probably tell. Um, today, uh, I am coming from you from my uh, study zone. Basically, I'm, I'm quite busy preparing for the Life in the UK um, test that I'll be taking later this week. Um, so everything uh, has kind of stopped and um, all of my focus has gone to that right now. So I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, everything's going to that right now. So we'll see what happens and hopefully I'll pass. I'll be taking it Thursday night. Um, so back to the books just briefly. This won't be a long one like last time. Um, so I also wrote a studio blog about it with part of the writing that I was doing about uh, why I was doing the books. Uh, one of the parts that I didn't get to is, of course, obviously, after I rebelled against working on the books, I, I'm sorry, after I rebelled in art school and worked on the books, I also, of course, realized that I did want to work as an artist, and I have worked as an artist for the last 20 years. So. I closed the books and I put that away and they're still in storage back back home in Arkansas um, because of course you know there's the the logistics the problems of showing books um, how do you present them uh, many people buy art in galleries that's framed or easily hung on the walls things like that so of course to maintain my my uh, work in the art field I, of course, turned to the very paintings that I was rebelling against in art school. Um, and I have no bad feelings about that uh, because I, too, see the value in painting. And I did want to make that very clear. Um, I wasn't saying that there's no value in painting. Obviously, if you listen to me, um, like painting in on canvas or on any structure that you put on the wall. Obviously, if you know me, you've watched my blog and my writings and things like that, you know that I value art of all forms. Um, but in art school, you've got this wonderful opportunity, this wonderful privilege to really follow your heart song and challenge yourself and challenge, you know, the norms of art making. Therefore, that's why I was able to do the books and pursue the books as my chosen art form. Once out of art school and wanting to continue as a painter, I of course shifted to painting on canvas. And that is what I'm known for doing and that is how I've worked over the last 20 years. Um, so uh, so that's what I do and that's I've shown work in various galleries in the States and here in the UK. And, just your typical paintings on canvas. I've done paintings on panel, paintings on paper, um, all sorts. Uh, and I do see the value of paintings. And I'm not saying that there's just this complete, utter void that uh, for work that's on the wall or galleries that show work that's on the wall. That's That was never my intention. The idea though was that for some people who don't understand art or who haven't felt comfortable in art or think there is something magical or more to art that they have to learn in order to get themselves into a gallery, that's where the book project came in for me was a sort of an equalization and putting art into an already known and recognizable format for those folks. And and perhaps then the art in the books would act as a gateway almost so that they could then comfortably step into a gallery and they could enjoy the art on the walls, the framed paintings, the thick chunky canvases hung on the walls. Um, yeah, so I just I just wanted to be clear about that. Obviously, I have become a painter who paints the very paintings I was rebelling against uh, and have done so for 20 years and will continue to do so for the rest of my life. But I also know as a celebration and as looking back to look forward, I wanted to go back to the books and see what it would be like to create them now at this point in my life when I've been to many openings, when I've seen how art can be perceived, understood, misunderstood, um, what would it be like to create those kind of um, pieces of art in, in the book? And as I've, 
and I've, as I've said, it was delightful. It was delightful to create because there's something about when material is less precious, uh, there's something more freeing for me personally. I feel quite free. I quite, I feel quite liberated. Um, and the pressure is removed from my process. So, so the strokes sometimes can even be bolder. Of course, when I'm working on a smaller scale thing compared to a larger scale thing, which was also a consideration. As an art student, I didn't have a lot of money. Um, as, as an artist of 20 years, I still don't have a lot of money. I don't have a lot of extra paint to waste. There was something I think about when you're a student and you've got student grants or loans and you're buying the paint, you know, I remember some of my studio mates quite thick applications of oil paint, which just ugh, made me nervous because <laughs> um, I thought, oh, that's such a luxury. You know, that's like a whole tube of alizarin crimson and like one stroke. And that's not something I ever felt comfortable doing. I think it's interesting to, to realize and note, you know, that, that people's financial situations and and, and the situations in general, if you have a big studio to work in, if you have a small studio, if you have a desktop, if, if you have a whole wall, uh, if you have lots of money to spend on paint, if you don't, if you have lots of uh, money to spend on other materials or if you don't, impacts the way you create your art. You can have a vision all you want. You can have a passion all you want, but there will be constraints on that vision and on that passion in terms of the way you execute it. So um, for me, of course, painting in books was a cheap or free material. It was recycling that material, and which I responded to from an environmental perspective. It required smaller amounts of the oil paints that I was using when I was creating the work. Um, a lot of the original books were painted in oil stick uh, these paintings now, at this part in my life, are painted on acrylic. I've pretty much exclusively switched to acrylic painting since moving over here. Um, uh, while I was trained in oils in art school. Um, you know, so there's something quite uh, reassuring about the smallness of the books creating small paintings. It's manageable for me space-wise if I'm working in a smaller space. It's manageable for me financially because of the cost of the materials um, and the less amount of paint required. Um, so all of those different things go into play. And so as an art student, yeah, I can definitely see why the books were so appealing to me. I could stretch my material budget. I could I could um, get a lot of work out of you know not very much money. And 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 honestly, I still consider those things. Um, after, after working in art for 20 years, I will probably always consider those things. Um, we have to sustain ourselves and we have to maintain ourselves. And, and so the way we do that is through the materials we use. Now, something I did this time is I varnished all the books. So the books were spray varnished with like a Winsor Newton Professional matte varnish. Uh, back in art school, I did not do that. Um, so this time around, when people are touching them and the oils from their fingers and everything, which I'm not very concerned about personally, but from an archival per perspective, it is something to be concerned about. So perhaps now after 20 years, I think a little bit more about that. Um, so they were all varnished. Um, so they, they could take a little bit more of a, a touchier environment. Um, and that's where maybe I do spend the money, is on the professional varnish. So there are all these different things that go into a project and how it's executed, how it's presented. Um, yeah, so I just I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit more about that. Um, you know, and to say that I'm not just going to paint on books um, from here on out. I think I'll paint a few books here and there to add to this collection. Um, you know, a lot of people also ask me, is the whole table, you know, is this, is this an installation? And, and well, yes, it is an installation with the books all on top of themselves and each other. Um, but at the same time, each piece is its own individual painting. So each piece is meant to stand alone. They are a series of works because I always work in series. 
um, but they are individual paintings within a series and that series umbrella is books and that connects to the previous books. Um, I was just looking at a comment that I got after my uh, video visit last week um, and the, the, the person writes, you know, uh, what would have happened, say, if a kid accidentally ruined one of the books while they're handling and touching uh, the book? Um, would I have seen that scratch your torn page still as a piece of art in progress? Um, and yeah, pretty much, uh, that did happen a couple of times at the Porty Art Walk, and it wasn't a child, it was just people touching the books, and if maybe a piece was a little more fragile, there, the tear that was already there would get a little bit bigger, and, and so I just t took some brown paper tape and taped up the back a little bit more, and it was good to go as far as I'm concerned. Um, all of that just again adds to the character of the book, adds to the character of the material. Um, like I said, they're not precious. They are still art, but they are just art. They are a book, but it's just a book. It was something rescued from a charity shop or a cheap bin or in the previous, you know, incarnation of the project, a free bin. Um, just because I didn't pay money for for them or paid very little money for them doesn't mean that they're not without value. They are. The, the books were, um, the double books that were actually thick books with the one painting in a double book was 150 pounds and the spines themselves with the image and maybe a spine or a small painting on a hardback surface, it, it was 75 pounds. Um, so yeah, it has value. It is for sale. It, you still can't really tear them up. I mean, you might have to just rip my painting completely in half to really make me feel like you ruined it. Um, and even then, I probably would have just taped it back together and put it right back in the book. Um, so that is, they are, the, the wear and the tear and the handling is just part of the process. I have to let go. Once I've painted the painting, I have to let go. My experience of... of making the art is is the experience and then my experience of sharing the art and how it's handled and touched and dealt with is a different experience and then what I do afterwards is just deal with that experience which was grabbed out you know grab some tape and tape some things up and hey it's all it's it's good no 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 feelings at all about anything getting damaged or extra distressed um, so the, the person's asking, so in other words, are these pieces done? Um, or because of the interactive approach, um, that, that I've created, are they just works in progress? And uh, no, they are done. They are done, but they are done. And then there's the pro this other part, just like when I name paintings, my big paintings, um, uh, that's a separate process. The naming of the paintings is a separate process to the creating of the paintings. The showing of the paintings is a separate process to the creating and the naming of the paintings. You buying the painting is a separate process from all of those things. Once you own the painting, I have no claim on that painting. I, I could come into your home and see it hung on its side, see it on the floor, see it, you know, taped up that's your business uh that's no longer my business my my business is in the creating of the painting and then the sharing of the painting and getting the painting to you once once it's in your hands that's your business um uh would i think about taking this the next step and actually letting people draw on them or paint on them or in some way become artists um and that is interesting, and I have had collaborative projects before where I would do a painting and send it to an artist, and then they would paint on top of it and or or leave parts of it, and it would go back and forth in the post, and then it would become something totally different than it originally started, and it was a collaborative effort. I don't really see the books as being a collaborative effort in that way where someone would paint it. I can certainly see perhaps leading a course 
in, in creating books, someone else's books, kind of leading them, maybe giving them some prompts, uh, giving, you know, providing the books, taping off the books, giving them prompts about maybe using materials in the books, but I can't really see them painting in the books that I've already painted in. Because as I say, I really do see the paintings as complete and the books as complete when the viewer is is um, reading reading the books. And that's the collaboration, is when the viewer picks up the book and puts their own ideas and thoughts and, and all of that into the book. Then there's an exchange. There's an exchange with the sharing and the handling of the book. Um, and then I was asked if I have any pictures of the graduation project and setup. And I might have some in an archive that I could dig up. So I'll definitely have a look. I was thinking about that, that I wished I had um, some of those older images. Um, you know, it was right at the cusp of digital photography um, and digital video. I think uh, I remember checking out a kind of large digital camera to try to document it. Um, I think there's even like a VHS recording of part of the exhibition that my parents might have. So I don't know. We'll we'll see if I can't track down some of the old uh, footage of the original books. I know I have scanned some of the original books, um, and they're on my blog. Uh, they're on my blog uh, many moons ago. So you'd have to probably use the search bar and dig up the books. Uh, you might want to type in books University of Oregon, and it might pop up that way or I might go through the blog and see if I can't find some and that could be something that I share in this Friday's blog. Um, as I said before right now all my energy and focus is going on um, passing the life in the UK uh, test that will be this Thursday night so hopefully if I pass it um, I'll be feeling a lot more focused and a lot more centered and again go back into my art um, this video is even longer, I think, now, or almost as long as the previous one. So thanks again uh, for your patience and for your interest in the books. If you didn't read the piece I wrote about the books, that's in Friday's studio blog. If you don't know the long video that I'm talking about, that's in last week's studio video visit. Um, so yeah, this was just a wee little study break. I'm going to make myself another cup of tea and uh, get back to uh, the life in the UK and see how we do come Thursday. And um, yeah, so that's that. So again, thank you for your questions. Thank you for your interest in this project. Again, if you are a school, a gallery, an arts center, um, or if you know of one that might be interested in showing this project or having me speak about this project in relationship to uh, people getting um, you know, feeling more comfortable around viewing art in general. Um, yeah, I would love to talk to you about that. So more soon next week. I hope you're well, happy, and inspired wherever you are. Take care. Keep fighting. Talk to you then. Bye.